Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First. It's a brand new week. Today is Monday. Good morning, good morning. It is February the 8th, 2021. I cannot believe that we're already into February. Uh, hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag shared. Get this out on your page and get ready as we have a lot of scriptures today. I know on Thursday, I kind of, you know, blew my notes up and did not give you all the passages. Uh, we're in a series called It Is Written, so it's important that I tell you what is written. I'm going to continue the conversation about the pivot uh, from how the Bible gives us the characteristics of God. And then as we come into a relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, the Holy Spirit begins to inform the Bible. So our first uh, kind of uh, relationship with God, the Bible's informing us of God, and then God begins to inform us of the Bible. He begins to uh, lead us into all truth. He begins to tell us of things to come and begins to remind us what Jesus said. Uh, so I want you guys to either have a pen and paper, a Bible, a uh, blue letter Bible, a uh, Bible gateway, version Bible, whatever it is, but you do need to take notes. There's going to be a lot of scripture today. Uh, I want to say hello to, let's see, Lana, Patty, Patty and Bill Hagen, good to see you guys. Tasha, Robert, Bonnie, Leanne, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mike. How are you guys doing? Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. And our first time guests know that we're glad they're here. Hi, Patty and Larry and Meredith and Audra. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Hope you guys enjoyed the Super Bowl. Hope it turned out your way. Um, it's, it's real hard to argue about Tom Brady, buddy. I, man, it's it's hard to argue. Probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest. And I know about the history of football, so don't anybody come on here and say, you know, you were born in the so-and-so. Tom Brady's been here through a lot of the history of football. Dude is 43 years old and still throwing three touchdowns, Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVPing it. But I got to give a shout-out to Tampa's defense, man. Wow. Wow. To hold one of the most powerful offenses to zero touchdowns? Wow. All right, let's jump into this. Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. We're looking at the final three temptations of Jesus as the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by Diabolos. Those last three temptations are categories of temptations, and we'll talk about those, and we've been talking about those. Uh, we've talked about the category of the temptation of uh, provision. We're now talking about the category of the temptation of protection. Harrison, man, I just... It's, it's an amazing thing. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Then the devil, Diabolos, took him, Jesus, to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. Now listen, I want you to be thinking about this in terms of what does God's word promise, just like with provision, what does God's word promise in relationship to protection? Let me ask you this. Does God promise you that you will not have tribulation? Does God promise you that you will not get sick? Does God promise you that your children will not get sick? Let me take that a step further, that you won't lose your children to sickness. Does God's word promise you that? Does God's word promise you that you will live a life with no problems? That Does God's word promise you that your spouse won't cheat on you or that you won't cheat on your spouse? Does God, what, does, what exactly does God's word promise you concerning protection? Because, look, when you just have memory verses on the refrigerator and you just pull scripture out of context and historical audience who was who it was it written to and when you pull scripture out uh, from context and you pull scripture out from the audience that it was written to and you pull scripture out from um, uh, not just context I want to get the character of God uh, you will you will set yourself up to be disappointed in God you cannot imagine how many people have taken the little promise books of God, and, man, been deceived. How many of you know that Diabolos will take the word and deceive you? If, if all you have is a book, if, if, if the word is simply the Bible, 
and what the Bible says. You will not know the truth, and the truth will not set you free. And I want to say this, and we'll get back to this. There has to be a pivot in your initial understanding of God. The Bible will inform you about God. But the Bible will not give you a relationship with God. Matter of fact, without the Holy Spirit, you can't know what it even means. So initially the word will lead you towards God, but there comes a pivot where you get in a relationship with God and the Bible is no longer the word. The word comes alongside and informs you of the Bible. That's an important pivot. The devil, the Abelos, took Jesus up to the top of the holy city and said, Stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written. I want you to see what the Abelos says. He, he's quoting not the word. He's quoting the Bible. He's quoting the Bible to the word. The distinction here could not be more clear. The Bible is not the Word. The Word had become flesh and was standing in front of him. Diabolos takes the Bible and quotes it to the Word. The Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Bible, the Psalms, the Prophets, Listen to how Diabolos takes the word and gives it to, or takes the scripture, takes the Bible, and gives it to the word. He will command his angels concerning you. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Lucifer pulls a Bible promise out of his little promises book. And he quotes it to the word. He says, God's word promises you that he will not allow your foot to strike the stone. Hallelujah. He will not let them lift their hands up against you. He will send his angels concerning you. Can't you just hear the organ in the background playing as the Bible without the Holy Spirit is quoted to the word? He will command his angels concerning you. They will lift you up in their hands so you'll not strike your foot against the stone. Uh, this was in this is in quotations. It's it's not this is not belonging to Lucifer. This is not belonging to Diabolos. He is quoting Psalm chapter 90. Psalm chapter 90. Everybody write that down because we're going to read it. Psalm chapter 90, because if you're gonna know what is written, I gotta read to you what is written. Psalm chapter 90 is what Lucifer is quoting to the word. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had informed the earth and the world, formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night, you carry them away like a flood, like they are sheep. In the morning, they are grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and it withers. For we have been consumed by your anger and your wrath, and we were terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all of our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years, and... If by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is the wrath of you. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy. My goodness. You know what? We're just going to read right through 91. 
Make us glad according to your days in which you have afflicted us in the years which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your children. How many of y'all notice there's one verse out of this chapter we, we pluck out and it's teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Let your work appear to your servants and the glory of their children and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of your hands before us yet establish the work of our hands. Diabolos knows this whole word. He who dwells, verse chapter 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and you see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High God, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you shall dash your foot against the stone. There's the verses that Lucifer called out to Jesus. Lucifer, Diabolos, took the word, plucked out a Bible promise, and handed it to the word because he has set his love. And I won't even go any further. Men and women have been on both sides of every single issue. And they've used God's word to do it. Come here, friends and family. There is one promise. There is one. There is but one promise. And the angel came and said to Joseph, you shall name him Yeshua because he will save his people from their sin. God's promised me he's going to heal me. You're going to die. God's promised me he's going to save my marriage. You have two people who have free will. God's promised me he's going to da 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 No. God's promised you that he will save you from your sin. Oh, but we've already had that pro He's promised you he will save you from... He's not going to save you from your body dying. Your body is going to die. He is not going to save you from your broken soul. Your body will die. Your soul will remain broken until it dies. Jesus has totally wiped your sins away, past, present, and future, and you now have the promise of eternal life. And to post refrigerator promises and treat the Bible as if it is the person who is the word. The flesh didn't become word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Bible didn't become flesh. The Word became flesh. If it sounds like I'm discrediting the Bible, I am not. I am putting all authority, not in the Bible, but in Jesus Christ who said, all authority has been given to me. Men and women, and I want you to notice in the political world we live in, in the spiritual world we live in, in the post-2020 world we live in, men and women will argue a case for racism and use scripture. Men and women will argue a case for abortion and use scripture. Men and women will argue for the case of war and use scripture. Men and women will argue the case for divorce and use scripture. 
How many people's adult experiences have not matched your Sunday school lesson? That if you will, God will. If you will, God will. If you will, God will. God already willed. God already has. Well, if it's God's will, it'll happen. That's not true. Where did you get this concept that if it's God's will, it will happen? That is not true. You know what? I'm not even going to read the rest of these scriptures. We're just going to hang out right there for just a second. Because, you know, I, I see this so much. It just... <clears throat> Larry, I am getting excited because I think we're busting up this concrete idol that we call the Bible. And we're going to stop taking sacrifices to it. We're going to stop taking our lives to it. We're going to stop taking our fruit to it. And we're going to be desperately in need of the Holy Spirit to open up the word of God and guide us into all truth. Because, you know, if it's God's will, it's going to happen. Well, it must have been God's will. If it's God's will, I'll do it. I'm just praying that, you know, Second Peter, write this down. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. Followers of Christ, we've got to quit trying to witness. We have got to stop trying to uh, evangelize people with false Bible promises. They see where God's promises in your life were reneged on, and that makes God a liar. God is not a liar. They see where they thought they were buying this, God's going to fix my marriage, so I brought my divorcing self and my wife, and we, and then, then they say these words after a couple of weeks of church, God didn't work for us. Uh, church didn't work for us. Uh, I come to God, I pray to God, I saw all these promises about healing, and I anointed my son with oil, I prayed, I had the elders come, I had the church come, I did all these things, and my child is dead as a doornail, your God's a liar. If these were promises, then your God's a liar, and that's okay for everybody that doesn't have to go to the hospital and, and pray over these families' babies. That's okay for all of y'all that don't have to go preach their funerals. That's okay for all of you who don't have to sit on the other side of the desk while they scream at God and ask you why your God's a liar and, and why do you think he's real and, and you're up there promising me all these things that God's word is going to do for me and then you come up with this stupid excuse why it didn't work. Listen, God's will is that none should perish. Yet people are going to hell every single day. Listen to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Let's back it up again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Not your promise. Not some word you plucked out of the Bible. The word is not slack. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance found in Jesus Christ, if it's God's will. Well, I'm going to do it if it's God's will. Well, man, little Billy died. Must have been God's will. Where's up? You say, Pastor, you're taking 
my solid foundation away. No, 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 no. I'm not taking your foundation, your solid foundation away. I'm just taking your foundation away. The foundation built on cracks and gravel and sand, when the wind comes, when the rain comes, when the earthquake comes, you know, what do you do when all God's promises concerning the healing of your cancer are taken off the fridge because you're dead? You say, well, God healed his cancer, but he might have went to hell. <laughs> okay, so pastor, you're, you're ripping the hope. No, I'm not ripping the hope out from under you. I am pulling out the false promises that you stand on, plucked out of scripture like Diabolos to Jesus from Psalm 91. He'll give his angels charge over you. Listen to me. Let me give you these things real quick. There's three things when it comes to reading scripture that you need to pay attention to. Number one, who God is talking to, the audience. Number two, uh, and, and this is kind of the same, historically, what is the history behind it? Number three, what is the character of God? And that's not in some kind of order at all. It really would be character of God if you're going to go down through here like that. Um, what is God going to protect you from? Let's get to the baseline of that. God will protect you from the wages of your sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift or the promise of God is eternal life. It's not on a scripture do I stand. It's on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand, okay? So you've got the entire Old Testament, the entire New Testament, which I believe is the word of God. But to pluck a scripture out and say, this is my promise, is a dangerous thing. God didn't send his son Jesus so you would have a relationship with a book. God sent his son Jesus so you would have relationship with God. That way, the disappointments are summed up in this. I am bought with a price. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. I don't have a relationship with a book. I have a relationship with a Savior. When I was new to God, that book taught me about the character of God. Now that I have the Holy Spirit inside of me, the Holy Spirit informs me what the Word says, what it means. So I can read the Bible and I'm like, I remember when that would have meant God's going to come through this month. But now I read it, God's already come through. He's victorious. And whether or not he comes through with the finances or the healing or my happiness or my relationship or any of that stuff, he's already come through. I'm not waiting for God to come through. God's already come through. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person listening, every person watching, every person out there. Holy Spirit, take this word, inform your scripture. Get us in the Bible through the power of the Holy Spirit to read it, understand it, know what it is, and know who you are. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. This might be one of the a little bit more difficult to understand, pray verse. So go back, watch it again, listen to it over and over again. Remember um, that I believe the Bible is 100% God's word. 
But the Word became flesh, dwelt among us, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. And so when we read this, and I love this, I read it all the time. Um, it's not what it used to be to me. It's not a book that promised me a good life. It's a book that the Holy Spirit informs me about love. It's a love letter. Bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.